Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest on the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today I have Katalin Kilofliski on the line, and he's founder and CEO of Goldplay Mining. Katalin, welcome to the show. Very nice to meeting you, first of all, and it's a pleasure to be on your show. All right, so uh, I'm excited to talk about gold play mining today. So um, some unique things that you're doing uh, for your shareholders and value that, that you're returning and really just to talk about the business, the business model overall, um, expectations, and also to get your insight on just for, for context for everybody that's watching this today. Um, we're, we're recording this in uh, the beginning of February of 2022. Uh, so if we think about what happened in January, it was not so hot. For, uh, for certain sectors, which we'll, we're going to get Catalin's uh, input on that in a moment. But uh, before we do, we'll start this show the way that we start them all with our Mission Matters Minute. So Catalin, we at Mission Matters, we amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives, and experts. That's our mission. Catalin, what mission matters to you? Well, for gold play mining, the most important thing that matters for us is to create shareholder value. In other words, make people money, right? For those investors that trust us with their dollars, we have a duty to generate return. And the way we do that is through results, through actions. Yeah. And, you know, like being in a mining sector, a junior mining sector, there's a lot of risk involved. Mm -hmm. So the one thing that we bring to the table, which is unique, is our track record both my personal track record and those of the people in the company. Myself, you know, having been involved just prior to Goldberg in a value creation exercise where we created value from shareholders from about 25 million market cap to about half a billion mm -hmm. over the course of less than a year. Uh, the chairman of our advisory board is the CEO of Skin Resources, which is a billion dollar company. I remember the days when myself and Walter, we were both running companies worth, including Skina, $10 million market cap. So really our mission is to deliver on our promises to create real shareholder return. Man, love bringing mission-based uh, entrepreneurs and executives on the show to share why they do what they do, like how they're adding value to the marketplace and just, you know, what wakes them up in the morning, gets them going to go out there and really do it. Um, so awesome having you on the show. Um, so maybe we start, take a step back here before we get into, you know, the market, before we get into gold play um, mining and talking about what's going on with the company, maybe like, how did you get started? You mentioned that you've done, you've, you know, worked with some larger companies in the past and you've been in the business for a while. Like, like, how did you get started in, in this industry? It's a good question. You know, my background is business. And I think, uh, you know, being, running a mining company, the most important thing is to think, keep in mind, it's a business. Mm -hmm. You know, a mining company at the end of the day, it's a business. And if you look even at the, at the most successful mining companies in the world, they are run by business-oriented people. Mm -hmm. So you don't really need to have a geologist really running a mining company. So that's number one. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to have been involved in the mining for about 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, I've had some great successes in the past, uh, including a company called Tudor Gold, where I've joined literally myself as director of corp dev for the company and as geologist. And uh, it was a small company worth 25 cents. And uh, uh, within a, about a year, it's turned up to a $4 based on results, right? Wow. And based on hard work. So um, that's a little bit background about myself. And really, I think one of my key, so key to success is work with the best people you can work with because it's teamwork it's not me it's us right and you look at gold play it's not myself although it's the people in the board the management team i have in portugal the advisory board which is comprised of very senior people which have a proven track record and this is a two-way situation because you know it's one thing to create shareholder value and, and deliver results it's basically almost like a responsibility to us. You know, we, we already set the bar high. So, you know, we have a duty to protect our reputation and our track record. So as a result of that, you can see that in Golpe, for example, people at the board and advisory board, for most part, they are shareholders. 
Yeah. They have their own money in the game. So, you know, we, we have a, a little bit of a different business model. And it's really the main thing that I think differentiates gold play than any venture I've been myself involved with, which is with gold play, I had the chance to start the company from a clean slate mm-hmm. where everything that I've learned in 20 years on the up things good and bad. Yeah. I've been able to structure the company such that we bring in hopefully the best of everything, the best of people, the best of projects, the best of investors, and, and be able to, to create a company um, which is, you know, my view, very well positioned for hopefully another success. Yeah. What, um, and as you mentioned in the beginning of this, like you're a businessman, like that, that's who runs the company. So you, you could have been, and just, you know, in what I know of you, you could have been successful in many different industries, many different fields running a business. Um, what, like what drew you to this sector? Maybe not necessarily as an investor yet, cause we'll get into that, but just as a business and just overall, like what drew you to this sector? When did you know, like, you're like, you know, this is for me. Yeah, I think it's a really good question. I just before getting into mining, I was a little bit more like doing what you have been doing, um, yeah. managing money and being involved in, in a tech trade at the time was a $2 billion fund and we had exposure to mining and oil and gas. And the mining fascinated me because, you know, it's a, it's both, of course, it's a high risk sector, yeah. but it's one that can provide very significant returns to investor if things are done right. As you know, you know, in mining, there is really maybe two ways to play the mining sector, right? One, it would be the high risk, early stage, junior market, like where we are. And that's, of course, the highest possible return and highest risk, both go hand in hand. You know, that's where you see stocks going to zero, possibly, or still stocks going 20 times, 30 times, you know, 10 times over the course of, you know, two to three years. Um, And then you have the other side of the mining sector, which is, you know, the established producers, companies producing metal. Those are more in line with pretty much typical businesses. So you won't see returns of that level, you know, have decent returns, but uh, nothing like the the junior market, right? So that attracted me because, you know, I was very focused on creating returns and, and, you know, being able to, generate tons for investors and the uh, mining sector uh, just just from that one point of view was very tr- attractive to me so i decided to move into the space so this is when i first jumped into the space and uh, lucky enough um, again i've been able to work with some really successful people with my first endeavor 20 years ago which generated significant shareholder value. and then from there um really it's for me it's a passion you know i don't view this a work this is passion i am a shareholder myself in the company i put my own money i do what i do because i love it and i do our best and i think um that's that's i think uh, what uh, yeah. really precious gold played and in my view other companies and, and taking it one level deeper, and it has to be your passion, by the way, because if not, like you couldn't, you couldn't get the type of um, team around you that you have, nor, um, nor could you, you know, get the type of results you've gotten in the past, um, and hopefully into the future. And so taking it, I guess, one, one level deeper here. So now um, you have you have a, an industry that you that you like, you're all for, um, for the opportunity. And I guess this transitions a little bit over to, to the um, to creating shareholder value. Like there's some industries that, um, you know, that maybe have been historically like really efficient, like there's not necessarily as much room to have the type of outsize gains as the ones that you're mentioning, right? Especially when you're dealing with the early stage. Like, so because if, if an industry is inefficient, um, just logically speaking, if you get, if you have the right, you know, the right management team, you have the right idea, the right business model, um, this is where taking that, you know, let's just say additional potential level of risk can equal more reward. Can you tell me a little bit more about like what as a model interests you and why you chose like early staged for your career in, in mining? Yeah, that's a very good question. And I think, you know, going back a little bit to what you've just said, um, yeah. it is indeed a, a high risk sector. Um, you know, only a very handful of the companies involved in the sector make it through. Um, so, you know, it makes it very hard for investors to make a decision to invest or not invest, right? So they really have to look at a few things, which in my view are very important before making that final call. 
One is, of course, the track record of the people. I say, okay, who is involved? What did they do in the past? So, you know, that gives you a, a better chance and better comfort. Okay, those guys know what they are doing. So, you know, I'm willing to invest and, and be patient for it, right? Um, and, and the other thing to keep in mind is that, again, uh, not every mining project becomes a, an economic project. You know, you could have a, a nice metal find or a nice yeah. intercept, but that's about it. You really have to find the next mine. And, and it's, it's a very long time horizon before, you know, you, you want to find the mine and you produce. It's call it the average 10 years, right? So the most money are being made by investors, of course, in the early stage, but like we are, right? We are 7 million market cap. So, you know, our goals are high. We have some really great projects, which we can talk about it later. But that's the type of return, you know, go from 7 million market cap to, let's say, 50 million market cap and then 100 million market cap based on results, based on finding what you, you've been looking for. Um, but that doesn't happen for every company. Mm-hmm. So what I recommend investors, you know, diversify. Really, if let's say you must set aside a set percentage of portfolio, say, hey, okay, I'm willing to bet on these things, right? Then pick five companies. If one works, and the other four don't, you're still gonna make a good return, right? So this is a type of mentality investors should have. You know, diversify, don't pick just gold, but pick, you know, two, three other names within your high risk profile and then wait, right? And then see what happens because sometimes they may, most, some maybe all work, but most of the time, not all of them work well, right? So you diversify and then you have to be patient. Unfortunately, that's the one thing that, makes our sector unique uh, and different, it does take time. It does take time because it's about results, it's about drilling, it's about doing one thing and another thing, and then eventually, you know, getting where you have to be. Mm. Well said. Uh, And so switching focus uh, slightly here, uh, let's let's bring it a little bit um, on present day. So as I mentioned at the beginning of this, we're recording this in, for context, we're recording this in uh, February of 2022, January, um, you know, stocks had a little bit of uh, something to say. Um, interest rates potentially being hiked up more and more and more. Um, the the percentages, three, four, five. I mean, all of the all the talk that's out there, all the noise. Like, right. like, what, what are you seeing in the market? No, I mean, look. Uh, in my view, we are long overdue for this, and it's very simple. You know, we don't. You don't need to be a. a a sector um, expert, right? Just think about, you know, the amount of money, free money that's been put forward by governments. And let's talk in particular US, yes. you know, about four or five trillion dollars that's been just printed and, and flooded the markets. And, you know, of course, with all those free money, uh, companies got free money themselves. And, you know, there was really no way to make a return than in the stock market, right? Because you get negative, you get really negative interest rate in in, in even today, even though it's zero, it's negative because inflation at 7%, right? Mm -hmm. So this is the reason what you've you've seen, you know, a lot of companies trading at very, very high multiples. And, you know, some companies fundamentals are strong. There's also a large amount of debt in the market. There's a lot of debt in the balance uh, shit of those companies, right? And then we are talking about interest rates going higher um, that will have a direct impact on their bottom line, right? Mm-hmm. Once you pay a much higher interest rate on your debt, well, it cuts in your bottom line. So it's then reflected in your share price. So it's really an anticipation of, oh, money supply is going to tighten, oh, r- rates are going to go up. Well, it has a direct impact on the stocks that have been trading at very high levels. But to the contrary of that, then I would really urge investors to have a look. The mining sector, which you know is the one that we are involved with, has been behaving a lot different because you know it's it's a lot. You know, it didn't even see that high returns, but it's a lot more um, disciplined, I think, than than tech and and other sectors, right? So um, it's quite a big difference, in my opinion. Mm. But it's no surprise to me. I mean, it's. Uh, are we in a bubble? Well, it's hard how you define a bubble, but yeah. we are in a, in a correction mode um, for sure. Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, some of this, I, I don't think there's many people that would watch this and say, yeah, we weren't overdue. It's almost like, yeah, we kind of knew. We didn't know when and it never feels right. good, but we kind of knew, right? <laughs> exactly. 
yeah, yeah. So how does how does this um, how does this interest rate you know potential hikes how do, how does this continue maybe hikes as we see higher and higher interest rates um, how does that affect gold like in, in gold play mining in general? Yeah, look, uh, it's a good question because look, where do you invest perspective? You got money, okay? Where do you invest? You can invest in stocks. You can invest in uh, cash and put it in the bank and basically yeah. lose money. Mm-hmm. And gold, you know, gold has been for thousands of years the, the ultimate store of value. And, you know, you, you can look up various uh, research reports, but I'll give one example. I've seen one recently where they said the same amount of physical gold was required to buy one loaf of bread almost 2,000 years and today, right? So, you know, so the purchasing power, the value of your money has not been lost. Mm. by having gold right now i don't want you to have all your money in gold but they say you know at least 10 percent of your network should be in gold why because gold is money you can actually get your gold to go to the bullion house you get cash right and vice versa go cash get the gold right so it does have an interesting value um of course once the interest rates supposedly go higher the cash becomes more attractive because you get the return but let's face it, let's look at what's actually going to happen and what's actually happening. You are talking Fed is going to raise rates five, six, seven times but we're from zero right now, right? So maybe go up to 2%. Let, let's assume. First of all, I really doubt that they can afford to do that. Why? Very simple. I mean, first of all, that they are talking not only raising interest rates, but tempering their asset purchases, which is mostly bonds and what they've been buying. And potentially selling, well, selling to who if they if they were the only buyer? That's one thing. The second thing, if all those bonds now suddenly their interest rates go higher and higher, and, and you know the yield right now one percent or something, they become worthless. So the entire bond market will crash. Mm-hmm. They, they can't afford, in my view, to even deliver a two percent rate increase. Uh, and just this is just that part. But now let's look at the total. Uh, debt of the company, the U.S. debt. Mm-hmm. Well, they have hard time servicing the debt, let alone the interest. So, you know, it's, it's in my view, it's a question of whether, whether it's even happening. But even if it does, you're still seeing an environment where the inflation rate today is 7%, let's say it gets to 2% interest rate high, well, it's negative five, right? Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, I think in my view, gold, should be preserving value and be higher, should be trading higher. And um, it's, it's, it's always proven to be a, a very safe investment. And, and the way you play the gold market, which I do it personally, yeah. you buy physical sum, that you put in your vault, you store it the, wherever you want to put it, mm-hmm. you keep it there for your kids, for your grandkids, and just mm-hmm. put it there. It's cash. You need the one day you go, you take it out, you get the cash. And that gets some exposure to the equity markets, which could be both the junior space and the more senior producers, the more Mm -hmm. lower risk, lower return potential, right? So I would do the three things if you want exposure to not only gold, but silver, copper, all the metals um, um, that I think uh, we can have life with them without them. It's just as simple as that. It's not like mining, you can say, as of, you know, so 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 year, we're not going to be mining anything. Uh, It can't. You can't. We we are talking because there is metals in our computers and batteries and 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 the electricity and you have to. You know, it's same like food and air. You you need that, right? And I like and I like the way that you uh, you explain this. By the way, and I, I want to maybe go a little bit more and stay on this topic a little bit longer. Is that um, when we talk about gold? Okay, that's one thing. You know, that's that pretty straightforward. But how you get exposure to gold when it comes to investing, I mean, there's options and there's a way to diversify even within that. So you said it, you did say it a little quickly. I just want to go back into just your ideas of, sure. of diversifying within that sector itself. In my opinion, every portfolio should have gold exposure. And it's a very simple, almost insurance policy you need on your, on your investments. Now, the percentage of that, you know, you can talk with your financial advisors and sure. generally it's calling it 10%. Mm-hmm. And within that gold exposure, which basically provides you that safe haven mm-hmm. part of portfolio, 
there's really three things that you could be doing. Mm -hmm. And I think you should be doing um, as an investor or, or, you know, that's what I am doing personal, right? Uh, I'll be buying physical gold. Mm -hmm. You know, you could buy it from your bullion dealer. You buy a piece of one ounce gold, put it in your safe, keep it there, keep it for your kids, for your grandkids. Mm -hmm. You need it one day, you go take it out, go to the bullion dealer, take your cash and spend the cash, right? So that's money. The second portion, I would be investing in the equity markets. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I would be looking for, you know, senior producers, companies that have a track record of production and many years ahead of them and low cost of production. And, and then you invest in the stock market because the amount of return you're going to get in the stock market will, will be a lot higher than in the physical gold. I'll give you an example. Gold moves $20 an ounce, uh, which is maybe 1%. Stock market could be 5% up just that one day mm. so, or even 10, right? So you get a lot higher bet on higher uh, re reward. On, and it also applies on downside too. So you can lose the same when it goes lower. And then the third thing I would invest in high risk like gold plays. Okay, what's the company that's very well priced, um, that's got the right people involved, that's got the right opportunity to make a discovery or discoveries, right? And get you from where we are today at 7 million to let's say 50, 100 million market cap. So 10, 20 times return on your money. And I would invest some of my money in this type of uh, sector. And there I will diversify, uh, maybe pick five names and invest in five different companies. So that's what I think uh, exposure to gold would look, in my opinion, to be able to diversify risk and get to take advantage of all those three things that I mentioned. It's great. Let's switch gears a little bit here. So I want you, we mentioned this throughout the interview, but I want to go further. So gold play mining. Um, tell me more about, about the company specifically and the model. Yes. So gold play mining, it's a fairly young company. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been trading now uh, both in US or OTC. QB. Uh, we have um, a listing there in US. The trading symbol is AUCCF. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are DTC eligible, which means trading is very easy for you. And then we're also trading in Canada on TSX Venture under the symbol AUC, mm -hmm. which basically means gold copper, AU gold and C copper. So people cannot forget that. So it's been trading for nine months. But what really makes us unique, and I alluded to this earlier, it's our missions, the way we come about creating the company. So first of all, we have both in the management team and the board and advisory board, people that for most part are shareholders, but more importantly, so they have skin in the game, like, yeah. like an investor would have, that oh, yeah. we, we are investing ourselves, our own money, uh, and we have invested and we'll keep investing. And, but the more importantly, you know, those people, they have a way to check their track record. I'll give you an example. I'll give it to myself. I won't repeat that, but Walter Coase, a billion dollar company, you know, five years ago was like 10 million market cap and, and so on, right? So you you have, okay, the right guys that they've had success in the past. So we have that. And then projects, you know, I we were very fortunate to have in our hands um, two very important projects in British Columbia mm -hmm. that have the potential for a major discovery. And the way you judge that is based on the what has been done previously and the type of results that have been obtained. And we are basically the first company to do a proper program on the project to prove up that discovery, right? So, so it's, it's the right asset um, and um, being able to be first to make that discovery, right? And then to counterbalance that early stage portfolio, we have exposure to past producing copper and gold mines in Portugal. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Portugal, it's a very friendly mining jurisdiction. It's just opened up significantly pro mining since last year. They have a new mining law. It's a big push in Europe for electrical vehicle, like everywhere in the world. Europe has found themselves in a situation where they're importing 90 plus percent of their metals from other parts. So they are genuine desire to produce within the European Union. And, you know, again, we are there at the right time. We have an excellent 
team there is managed by a guy that's run the Landin mining operations in Europe for seven years. So Landin multi-billion dollar market cap company again. And we have one of the guys as part of our team, a small company like us, 7 million. So that tells you something. Uh, and but more importantly, um, those projects in Portugal, they are basic, as I mentioned, counter balancing the high risk of yeah. the VC uh, because those are projects they've been producing. And, you know, it's just that the fact that when they last produced 25 years ago, metal prices were even example, 75 cents a pound of copper to this 450. Nothing happened since. So our objective is to bring those forward and, and eventually restart production of those projects. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and, and I will leave it at that. Um, you know, and then of course we are fortunate to have a good shareholder base that we started with. Lots of um, high net worth investors and really good brokers and people that people are really mostly that have worked with us in the past and have been trusting us with their investment dollars to try to do it again. That's basically what it is. That's great. And and looking at your your overall model, when you think about um, market cap versus what the you know what the assets that you hold are actually worth, I mean, tell me a little bit more about that because I think it's interesting. It sure is, and it's very unique to mining. Uh, you know, I'll give an example for the projects we've acquired in Portugal, maybe collectively. There is infrastructure in place, you know, made of mine development things that have tens of millions of dollars. Yeah. Uh, because again, you know, there's stuff that has been done and it's yours, right? Now we 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 have all that, right? So we basically got that all for free, really. So yeah. when you look at uh, market cap of seven million and maybe let's say 20, 30 million of work has been done on those projects, it's a it's a great deal. Like there's a lot of value in there in that it's deal. Absolutely, it's a lot of value. But the way we look at it, we look a little bit more pragmatic and say, okay, how much real value in terms of what's left to be mined is there? And for most part of those projects that I mentioned in Portugal, only about one third or less of the known metal in the ground has been taken out. Right. Wow. So that's the real value, right? And then then, you know, yes, we have to do a resource, we have to do drilling, we have to spend more money before we, we can produce. But that's real value. You know, there's metal in the ground that's left there, no. And then on top of it, you come and discover more, right? And that's where our technical team comes into place and, and try to add more, more metal really around uh, the known pool of resource, right? Fantastic. So, so Catalina, I mean, I know a lot going on, multiple projects, different stages. I just have to ask, uh, what's next? I mean, what's next for yourself? What's next for gold play mining, your executive team? Like, what's next? I think what's next is we're going to get down to action. Uh, and what I mean by that, we're going to begin drilling in BC at those major projects. Also, what's going to be next, we're going to try to focus our efforts because, you know, as part of the creation of the company, we've got all those great projects that we need to stay focused, right? We cannot do everything. So as part of our next few months here, you'll see us defining our focus, which I think in BC we have defined it already. And then when Portugal, same will happen. And we're going to pick our project that we think has the best chance. And then we'll try to find the joint venture partners or other ways to extract value from the assets that we can focus on, which basically means creating additional shareholder value with no dilution because, you know, uh, we'll be trying to extract value from what we already have. Um, so that's next. And then uh, definitely stay tuned. Uh, you, we are very easy to reach. Um, myself, um, I'll be taking every call and every email as much as I can. Uh, my contact information is on the website, including my personal email, my personal phone number. Uh, I really encourage investors to get in touch, ask questions, challenge us, put us to test. And um, you know, we're welcome to uh, try to explain more about you know, the junior sector in general and if needed, uh, more about our company. Fantastic. And if somebody is watching this or listening to this and they do want to visit the site, I want to make sure they get it. So website, ticker symbol, please. Yeah, it's called playmining.ca. Uh, in US, the ticker symbol is AUCCF on OTCQB. And in Canada, it's AUC on TSX Venture. And uh, my email is the first name at goldplaymining.ca. 
Wonderful. And we'll put, and for all the listeners, we'll put all that information in the show notes. So you can just uh, click on the link and head right on over to the website and, and get more information, of course. Uh, and, and speaking to the listeners, if this is your first time with Mission Matters, we're a platform that's all about really um, bringing on entrepreneurs and executives who are giving back, who are mission-based, and really who are going out there to add value to the marketplace. Um, so we share a lot of success stories. Um, if that's the type of uh, content you're into, we definitely hit. Uh, we definitely invite you to hit that subscribe button because we have many more mission-based individuals coming on, and we don't want you to miss a thing. And Catalin, really, it has been a pleasure getting to know more about you, your passion for for mining, for the space. I mean, just all of it. Your team. I think it's amazing story. I'm happy to bring it to my audience. And again, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you.